My, my. Thursday. <laughs> the Roma Wine Show, starring Charlie Ruggles, Mary Astor, and Misha Auer. <laughs> It's the Thursday Night Roma Wine Show, brought to you by the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. And stepping down from the screen to greet you in person is Roma's hostess, ladies and gentlemen, Mary Astor. Thank you and hello, everybody. On behalf of Roma Wine, welcome to our Thursday Night Show. On hand to make it a great evening, we have the sensational singing combination of the Pied Pipers. Misha Auer will delve into his past for another of those fabulous adventures. And Charlie Ruggles produces a Thanksgiving play with the aid of Mrs. Snavely and his neighborhood friends. So plan to spend this half hour with us and meet the two stars of our show, Charlie Ruggles and Misha Auer. <laughs> Charlie. Hello, Misha. Hello, Mary. Greetings, my little fluffy, ruffled petunia. <laughs> you know, Mary, I was just thinking, these American sailors of ours are great guys. The greatest in the world, Charlie. Oh, boy. Up on Hollywood Boulevard the other day, a couple of them spotted two pretty girls walking along with two shore patrols, see? Eh? And one sailor said to the other, hey, boy, get a look at what's coming over the horizon. Two nifty little destroyers. And the other one said, yeah, but look what's with them. Minesweepers. <laughs> Yeah, look who is talking about the Navy. The closest you ever got to the ocean was salt water taffy. Now, wait. Now, just a minute, you Russian beanpole. You were never in the Navy either, you know. Oh, yes, I was. In fact, they were going to make me a Commodore until they heard my humor. Mm, then what did you? they do? They made me a Humidor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mary, our new housekeeper has a husband in the Navy. He's on a submarine chaser, and boy, the things she's learned from him. What do you mean, Charlie? Well, every morning, instead of knocking on my door to wake me up, she throws a depth charge over the transom. <laughs> oh, man the lifeboats. Here's Lud Gluskin and his swell Roma Wine Orchestra to open our show with an old favorite, Back Home Again in Indiana. <laughs> gentlemen, Frank Martin, the young man who says... I speak for Roma. Now that the chill days of fall are here and the colder days of winter are just ahead, it's a good thing to sip a glass of wine of an evening for warm, contenting relaxation. And make it Roma wine, friends. Roma wine from the sunny summer valleys and hillsides of California, nature's most favorite of all the world's vineyard gardens. You'll find Roma California wines, the perfect expression of the old world art of winemaking, plus the extra care, the constant testing and tasting our modern knowledge has added to that ageless art. Roma wines will meet your personal test, your eye test for clarity, your nose test for bouquet or aroma, and your palate test for satisfying, pleasant taste. 
Yes, Roma California wines bring you sunbeams from warm valleys for your cool fall and winter evening. But keep one thing always in mind when you buy wine. Remember, the name of our wine is Roma. R-O-M-A, the four-letter name that brings you four fundamentals of complete wine satisfaction. Roma wines are true to type. Roma wines are faithful in flavor. Roma wines are sound of character. Roma wines are reasonable in cost. No wonder America's largest selling wines are Roma. The Roma Wine Show presents the memoirs of Misha the Magnificent. Again, the soft warbling of the night birds heralds the approach of evening. And once again, Misha the Magnificent arises to mold another of his adventures into a thrilling climax. Let's listen to one of these moldy adventures. <laughs> the memoirs of Misha the Magnificent. Wild Animal Edition. Title of chapter. How I, Misha, delivered stew to the gnu in the zoo when I was two. Or, Zhenya Prechsunyevtsanya Krikenkevich with elephant. New paragraph. Even as a small child, I was fond of the animals and tried my best to be like them. In this, I succeeded, for as a boy, I was always barefooted, bullheaded, and hog wild. With a little practice, I also learned the language of the birds and was soon able to talk turkey. As I grew to manhood, I became intensely interested in the creatures of the forest. And it was Papa who told me that I had just the right appearance to handle dangerous wild animals. Or, as he put it, Misha, with that face, you ought to be in a zoo. What an inspiration these words were from Papa. Soon I found myself in the office of the keeper of the zoo. Keeper, I said, I am Misha, the explorer, the discoverer, the bringer back. Good. We've been looking for someone like you, an explorer, a discoverer, and a bringer back. You have? Yes. Go explore the zoo. If you discover any dirt, sweep it up, and when you're through with the broom, bring her back. With these kind, encouraging words, I made up my mind to go to the jungle in search of an animal that was rare. <laughs> I'd even settle for some medium rare. <laughs> Accordingly, I began my journey and got a lower on a Pullman coach. Funny thing, it was lower than the coach. All night long, I could hear the clicking of the wheel. Throw myself, throw myself, throw myself, throw myself. <laughs> From here to the waiting ship was but a short jump. I missed the jump. The sun came up early, and when I awoke, I was on board the ship bound for the jungles of Africa. The first night out, I met shy, demure Clarissa. We passed on the deck. Hello, I said, throwing her a sidelong glance. Good evening. She said, throwing me, throwing me a left hook. <laughs> a beautiful friendship had begun. Stepping close to her, I said, I am Misha. So what? I'd like to know you better. Footnote, she kept swatting me all over the place. <laughs> On footnote, growing tired of this, we struck up a conversation. Uh, Misha, if you're really a big game hunter, what are you doing here? Well, the, the police closed up all the big games. <laughs> Captivated by her girlish beauty, I offered her a motion picture career. You'll have to ask Mother. Where is Mother, child? In the stateroom, waving her hair. What's the matter? Can't she afford a flag? As she approached me, I could see that this child's mother was a woman of culture and elegance. She was uh, the real mid-Victorian type, a dainty little woman with high lace collar and a lorgnette. Uh, pardon me, ma'am, I said. I would like to guide your daughter's career. She lifted her lorgnette to her eyes, and in a voice reminiscent of good breeding and social background, she replied... <laughs> Let me bring up that sprout. Ah, take a pot of chowder head. I'll bring up that sprout. Now, my dear lady, let's not get raucous. Raucous, smokers, lay off of that sprout or I'll paste you one. <laughs> but no, I never saw them again, for they went south for the hangnail festival. And I rode to Brussels for another sprout. On footnote. The next day, we stopped at a desert island off the coast of Africa. I was talking to the captain. 
Captain, why are we stopping here? Here, monsieur? Here I take on food. I take on water and I take on freight. You take on all these things? What do you put off? You! Like Robinson Crusoe, I thought I was alone on this desert island until one day I saw the tattered figure of a man approaching. Behind him were three little tots. Could this be? I trembled in anticipation as I asked him, Pardon me, are you Robinson Crusoe's man Friday? No, I followed him. I'm Saturday. <laughs> well, who are those three children? Sunday, Monday, and always. <laughs> There were no peculiar animals on this island, so I decided to cross the water to the mainland, Africa. I left the next day by turtle. I was on this turtle for so long that I finally turned turtle. <laughs> the next thing I knew, I was in the jungles of Africa. Here, at last, I knew I would find the rare animal I sought to bring back. Suddenly, I heard the thump of heavy footsteps. Then the bushes parted. Goodbye, Bush. So long, Bush. <laughs> and out of the bushes stepped the largest, most ferocious savage imaginable. His face was hideously painted and he wore a necklace of human skulls, while on his giant shoulder was slung a limp rhinoceros. He saw me and stopped. His eyes bulged and his shaggy face contorted horribly. In a thunderous, earth-shaking voice, he roared, I am a savage beast. <laughs> Honest, I am. Honest. Savage beast, I asked him, have you seen any peculiar animals around here? Oh, yeah. Yesterday I saw a grunk. A grunk? What's a grunk? That's an animal that has a head like a giraffe, a body like a lion, and an appetite like a horse. Good. Where is it? Where is it? My mama gave me an aspirin tablet, and it went away. And then one day, I saw that which I had come to find. Before me stood the strangest animal I've ever seen. It looked like a cow, but it couldn't be. It had no horns. Quickly, I captured it and boarded the next boat back to America. I knew it would be acclaimed at last. Proudly, I stood before the zookeeper with my pride. What have you there, Michel? Sir, I am here the rarest animal in the world. A cow without horns. What an object that was study. Maybe science can discover why this cow has no horns. Well, that's very simple, Misha. This happens to be a horse. The end. <laughs> Someday the boys in the little white coats will come and take Misha away from us forever. Right now we turn to more serious business. <clears throat> Meaning, of course, the Pied Pipers. This swell vocal group has whipped up a nifty little tune which seems to be doing all right across the networks. It's called I Dug a Ditch. <laughs> I was just a cowboy on a ranch in old Wyoming Till ambition got a hold of me one day So I packed my duds and started roaming from Wyoming And now this is why I'm glad I went away I dug a ditch, I dug a ditch And I struck it red down in Wichita, yippee I yippee I and I made it pay in Wichita. I could keep on dig, dig, digging like I've been digging before. Now I'm feeling so hot, diggity, I want something more. I've got an itch just to leave that ditch. I want to go back to Marie who stuck to me. Before I dug a ditch and struck it rich in which I thought. 
keep on digging like I dug it before. Now I'm feeling so hot diggity, I want to get something more. I've got an itch like to leave that dig. Want to go back to Marine, stuck to me before I dug the ditch and struck it rich in Wichita. Very well indeed. Now, Frank Martin, prepare our listeners for what is about to happen. Charlie Ruggles has written another play. What a very special play, ladies and gentlemen. The annual Thanksgiving presentation of the San Fernando Fish and Chowder Club. We find producer Ruggles suffering with laryngitis tonight, hard at work backstage. You know, Gene Mary, I sure am enthused about my play. And I don't know when I've seen you so excited. Oh, it's just that I love being backstage, Charlie. There's a certain air about backstage of the theater. Yeah, isn't there? Especially when it's a fish and chowder club, you know. <laughs> ah, look what I'm wearing to tonight, Mary. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? Pilgrim shoes with buckles on them and knee breeches. And look, here's the hat. Well, Charlie, the costume's authentic. All except the hat. Well, yeah, well, I've got to explain that to you, Mary. You see, we have a big Thanksgiving dinner scene, and the Brown Derby restaurant donated the food. Uh-huh. And, of course, I promised in return, as a hint to the audience, I'd wear this hat, you oh, see. Well, that was very nice of them to provide the food just in exchange for you wearing a Brown Derby. Yeah. You must be a pretty good customer. Oh, I practically live in there. And some days I hardly find time to run home and eat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Why, Charlie, don't you ever spend any money in there? Why, certainly I do. Why, only last Friday night I bought dinner for a party of 22. A party of 22? Hmm. That must have cost you a lot of money. Yeah, you're not kidding. She ate like a horse. <clears throat> <laughs> I have to laugh at that myself, Mary, you know. <laughs> you know, Mary, since um, since uh, I'm Captain John Smith in this play, you know, yes. and you're going to be Pocahontas, there's one embarrassing thing, Mary. What's that? Well, at the end of the play, right after we're married, I hold you tight, you know, and I close my eyes like this, and then I pucker up my lips and... Why, Mary, Mary, you kissed me. No, I didn't, Charlie. Well, it must have been a figment of my imagination. No, I'm Mrs. Snavely, your next-door neighbor. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Snavely, please, what was the idea of kissing me? Well, you were standing there with your eyes closed, and I hate to see a good pucker go to waste. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mrs. Snavely, as a favor to me, please don't do it again. Now, what is it you want here? Well, I'm an actress, and I want to be in the play. No, 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 I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. Navy, but there's nothing for you in it. I can't. You've got to let me be in the play. Don't forget, I'm the head of the chowder club. Uh, Mrs. Snavely, chowder head or not, there's no part for you. <laughs> I'm not a chowder head. I'm head of the club. All right, club head, then. <laughs> That's better. But I'll tell you what you can do, Mrs. Snavely. You can prepare the food for the big Thanksgiving dinner scene. How's oh, that? Oh, thank you, Mr. Ruggles. I'm a good cook. That's how I met Mr. Snavely. Is that so? You mean you were childhood sweethearts? Yes. He used to carry my pots home from cooking school. Oh, now, isn't that thoughtful? That was wonderful of him, you know. Of course, lots of marriages are pot luck, Mrs. Snavely, you know. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. S. Goodbye, Mr. R. <clears throat> Well, Mary, I think everything's set up, so I'm going home while uh, I'm going home while the orchestra rehearses. You see, now don't forget curtain at eight thirty, Mary. I'll be there with bells on. No, 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 no feathers. You're playing an Indian, remember? <clears throat> All right, uh, st- uh, start the orchestra, boys. While Charlie is getting his big Thanksgiving play ready. I'd like to tell you about a card I had from one of our listeners last week, which I believe is definitely worth answering on the air. This lady says, Miss Astor, I understand that you explained certain rules for serving wine recently. I'm especially sorry I missed the Roma wine show that night because I'd like to know your answers about the proper glassware and table linen to use. Well, very briefly, let me repeat the answers. You don't need fancy glassware to enjoy the goodness of Roma California wines. Elegant glassware may flatter the beautiful colors a bit more, but the flavor will be the same in any glass. You don't need fancy linens either. Roma wines are just as thoroughly enjoyed on tables covered with checkered cloths, 
as with the rarest of lace or linen. You don't have to worry about which type of wine is correct either. Select the type you like the best, either red or white. And whichever you choose, you know you can serve it for only a few cents a glass. In Mary, we can all remember that Roma wines are delicious. Roma wines are suitable on any table. Roma wines are economical to serve. Indeed, yes, Frank, always. For fine wines at reasonable cost, say Roma. Now, Frank Martin, the big moment is here. Set the stage, please. A sturdy band of pilgrims in Plymouth, New England, were exhausted on that memorable November day. Exhausted from starvation and privation, tired from war with the Indians. So their stalwart leader, Captain John Smith, played by Charlie Ruggles, went to the Indian chief and pleaded for his people. Curtain. Music. I beg is of thou, strong warrior, take me to thy chief. Me tired. All day stand in front of cigar store. Oh. <laughs> and what dost thou do in front of cigar store? Me say, L.S., M.F.T. <laughs> well, what do you know, a commercial Indian? Oh, here comes Chief Sitting Bull now. Ugh. Yeah, ugh. Please, mighty war chief, make your brave spare my people. Ugh. There's no reason why us thouest and me us cannot be friends us. Is there us? Ugh. Why dost thou keep saying ugh? Ah, uh, the ugh and boom, da da Now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. Now, you cut that out, Frank. This isn't a musical, you know. White man come to offer hand in friendship. <laughs> and what is that? That mini ha-ha. <laughs> My goodness, she sounds like she must be sitting on her feathers or something. Oh, big cheese, big chief. Your tribe has been burning white men at the stake. <laughs> Canst thou do something about this? Me tell them tribe go easy on stake. Red man, no red points. <laughs> Meanest thy that thou will make peace? I spare life of your people if you marry my daughter Pocahontas and raise many brave. Ah, but chief. It will take me much time to make a decision like that. Much better marry Pocahontas now. Have papoose before Pearl Harbor. <laughs> ah, wait. Here cometh a messenger from my people. What is thou message bearest thou? Thee? <laughs> Thy women are weeping from hunger. Thy children are crying from hunger. Yeah, and your acting is from hunger, too. <laughs> ah, but alas and alack, I must save my people. So perhaps I shall wed Pocahontas. Wilt thou? I wilt thou. I shall ride back and announce the news to my people. Mighty war chief, friend Alvin, go fetch Pocahontas. Pocahontas? <laughs> the name is Pocahontas. Now stop clowning, will you, Alvin? Never mind her last name. It shall be changed. As of tomorrow, we shall be known as John Smith and wife. Oh, I know them. No, oh, these aren't the same people at all. <laughs> Stick to the play, will you please? Maybe I can ride back to the village and get help, Captain Smith. No, oh, but these hills are filled with bloodthirsty redskins. That's all right. I'm anemic. <laughs> Alvin, I never asked a man to do anything I wouldn't do, and I wouldn't do anything, so good luck, Alvin. Wait him, pasty face. Why? No need send help. Red man make peace. But first, white man meet him Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pokey! Coming, father. Well, taketh Pokey so long. What taketh Pokey so long to get here? <laughs> Call me Big Chief? Yeah, Pokey meets Smitty. How? How? White man ask for hand in marriage. I give white man hand in marriage. Thank you, but don't unscrew it. Just bring it with you. <laughs> this Pocahontas is good friend Alvin. He be best man. Greetings, friend Alvin. How is thou is? He best man? Well, that's the best we could get for five dollars. <laughs> All the good actors are working, you know. Come, Alvin and Pocahontas. 
We shall get on my horse and ride back to my people. But can a horse run far with three people on his back? Three men on horse run many years. Mm. Three men on horse had talent, not pale face Indians. Giddyest yap, White Steed. Giddyest yap. Afternoon, we find Captain John Smith in the Pilgrim Settlement, ready to announce his engagement to Pocahontas. Ah, good friend Barney, I fear me. I am very nervous about my engagement. Have you ever been engaged before, Captain Smith? Aye, six times. All told? No, one keepeth her mouth shut. <laughs> very good, Captain. Thou art in good spirit. Yea, tonight findeth Captain Smith sharper than a plate of soybeans. <laughs> yes. Now away with thee, friend Barney. I see Pocahontas approaching from the distance and notice the beautiful picture as she walks near, covered in a glorious veil of feathers. Oh, why dost thou hide behind those feathers, Pocahontas? I'm not Pocahontas. I'm Mrs. Snavely, your next-door neighbor. <laughs> Mrs. Snavely, what are you doing out here on this stage? I'm setting the table for the big Thanksgiving dinner scene. Well, what's the idea of wearing one of our Indian costumes? This isn't an Indian costume. I got all full of feathers cleaning the turkey. <laughs> well, all right. Now get back and watch the food. It has to be returned to the Brown Derby at 8 o'clock. You understand? I will do as to so as yeah. All right. Just get back to the kitchen, Mrs. S. Now, now, where? Now, where? Where's Pocahontas now? Here, Pocahontas. by thy side forever, Captain Smith. Well, what took you so long? I was shopping for a bridal, goon. <laughs> Pardon me, Mary. That's bridal gown, not Oh, goon. I'm sorry. Oh, Captain Smith! Hey! Captain Smith! Hey! The Indians are coming. The Indians are coming? Yes, look! Look, Captain, they bring us food. Ah, so they do. And here comes big chief warrior chief now. Greetings, warrior chief. Captain Smith, me keep word. My tribe bring food, and me make peace offering of fruits, candies, and nuts. For us? Yes. I bring fruit to women, candies to children, yes. and nuts to you. <laughs> now, listen, I told you, that's not in the script there now. Oh, mighty warrior chief, we express our gratitude. And what prompted thy to do all this? Big chiefs hold powwow, decide lend lease. Oh. Hey, hey, our people are at the dinner table waiting for the food to be served. Excellent. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Mmm, white man psychic. <laughs> right here, Captain Smith, at the head of the table. I thank us thee, I thank us thee. Before we partake of our Thanksgiving dinner, I wish to make an announcement. I wish to make... I... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's the food? Mrs. Snavely! Mrs. Snavely! Yes, Mr. Rungles. Well, what happened to the food? Mr. Rungles, the food won't be ready in time. Won't be ready in time, but this is the big scene. I know, but I can't stuff the turkey. What do you mean, you can't stuff the turkey? I can't get him to open his mouth. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Mrs. Snavely. This play is the biggest turkey anyone would want for Thanksgiving. So good night, folks. <laughs> You're not kidding, Charlie. There's the song that says good night until next Thursday night at another Roma wine show. Charlie and Misha, I hope you two have patched up your differences. Oh, sure, Mary. We were just kidding. Weren't we, Charlie? Why, of course. Hey, Misha, let's have dinner tomorrow night. Wonderful. Well, we eat. Well, you eat at your house, and I'll eat at my house. <laughs> I'll tell him when he comes in. That's all. Until next week, this is Mary Astor saying good night. <laughs> Mary Astor appears courtesy Metro Golden Mayor. Misha Hour, courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Charlie Ruggles will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Our Hearts Were Young and Gay. This is Frank Martin speaking for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, and inviting you to tune in again next Thursday for another Roma Wine Show. Remember, before you buy wine, buy war bonds and stamps. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.